So, Mrs. President, following uh, weeks of tense diplomatic talks between the West and Russia, we see no sign of de-escalation. In the contrary, we see that both Russia and now the United States are amassing more troops on both sides. So, you see that diplomacy has failed and now Europe is spiraling towards a real war? We should never give up. Um, to work on diplomacy because uh, as uh, Russia has created this crisis we do everything for diplomacy and dialogue to be successful but we are very clear also that in case that there's any further military aggression of Russia against Ukraine that this will have severe consequences and massive costs for Russia. We are very much aligned with our friends and partners like the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada and others and we have prepared a robust and very comprehensive package of sanctions. Can you tell us more about this package of sanctions? What is the concrete European plan? It is, as I said, a comprehensive package in so far it's concerning the economic and the financial sector. Um, it would uh, limit the access of Russia to the financial markets of the European Union and it would limit uh, Russia's access to crucial goods and technology it needs and that cannot be easily supplied and uh, replaced. And therefore, as we know that Russia has a very one-dimensional economy mostly focused on uh, exporting fuel, um, uh, fossil fuel, uh, fossil-based fuel, um, we know that uh, it is crucial for Russia to have access to these goods and capital and therefore it must be in the interest of Russia to de-escalate. But can Europe really afford to impose sanctions that could put its energy supplies at risk? Can a disruption to Russian gas uh, really be entirely replaced? Because we know that now it's currently covering around 40% of Europe's needs. So can it be entirely replaced just in case there is a backfire? Indeed, um, this would be a severe uh, situation, but uh, we have done our homework and we are working intensely, intensively of uh, preventing and being prepared for such a situation. When uh, there was the unlawfully and rightfully uh, annexation of Crimea in 2014, for example, there was just one LNG terminal in Europe. By now, uh, we have built more than 20. So we are able to receive LNG gas from other suppliers worldwide. I've created a partnership for energy security with President Biden. Next week there will be a summit on this energy security. And of course we have spoken to many different LNG suppliers worldwide who are very interested in um, going into the gap that uh, Russia would leave. Um, and to supply LNG uh, to the European Union. But more important, we've done our homework with the renewables. Um, the renewables, uh, we have massively invested and they increased. They had eyes level by, by now what the uh, energy supply in the, the European Union is concerned with gas. And uh, the renewables are, we are completely independent. They are clean, they are homegrown. So this is the future where we have to invest in. I guess still there. Uh, finally, I would like to ask you about the EU as a bloc, uh, because we see uh, individual member states taking their own initiatives. For example, the Hungarian Prime Minister visited Moscow and President Putin and publicly described Russian demands as reasonable and sanctions as pointless. On the other hand, we see France and President Macron setting his own agenda, etc. So, what is the leverage that the EU as a bloc has in this stage, in this global crisis? Uh, as it cannot speak with one single voice. There is uh, unity and a very strong alignment uh, within the European Union. We are in constant contact. I speak on a regular basis, on a daily basis with the um, heads of state and government. Uh, we inform each other, we align together, we give coherent responses or demands, whatever the situation is. And what Hungary is concerned so far, they always supported the sanctions against Russia. And uh, they have so far announced that, of course, they will uh, keep the unity with the European Union if it is necessary to act. Okay, President, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you.